Those racks show no temperature change or a cooling, depending upon the way you average the data from the mid-1960s to now. In other words, the last 40 years in Antarctica do not show a warming. But Antarctica, which is a massive continent, is um, building up ice and cooling in most parts. So, um, and that is an uncon uncontroversial fact, you know, and the IPCC's most recent report confirms that, which shows you that it must be a grain of truth there, because the IPCC is very much more inclined towards um, scary scenarios. It is so darn cold down there, a little bit of warming just doesn't have an impact. So the IPCC, right in the executive summary, says Antarctica is expected to thicken, not retreat. And yet we see never-ending images of some block of ice coming away from the peninsula as if that's evidence of global warming. That is absolutely silly. Now again, if you bring this up in the wrong circles, get ready to die on a cross, but uh, that is the reality. And forever I challenge people to just go read the IPCC Executive Summary, or the Summary for Policymakers, and I think they will walk away from that experience shocked at the things that the IPCC really said. Hans, we're, uh, we, we've been showing these pictures of the Larsen B ice shelf breaking off, and we're told that that means Antarctica is warming up. We're also told that Greenland is melting, and we're told that polar bears are drowning, and there's a huge area of open water in the Arctic at this time. What does this all mean, and what's the truth about Greenland and the Arctic? Well, uh, Greenland is melting a little bit around the edges. And according to the uh, most recent studies, this will contribute uh, approximately 5 centimeters to sea level rise in the next 100 years. But we don't know whether this trend, which uh, has been seen over the last, uh, say, 10 or 20 years, will continue. So uh, there might be a small contribution of the melting of the edges of uh, of Greenland to sea level rise. As far as the polar bear bears are concerned, polar bears have survived many uh, periods of climate change over the last two, three, four, five thousand years in the past. And at the moment, the polar bear population is thriving. The number of polar bears has uh, grown uh, dramatically over the last uh, 50 years. Estimates uh, range from a factor two to a factor five. So there's nothing wrong with the polar bears. Right. Well, you know, there was, there was a picture, though, Hans. Uh, somebody took a picture of a polar bear and a little teeny piece of ice, and that's the one that's gone around the Internet, you know, making it look like the entire Arctic is, uh, is, is melting. Well, that was the picture which was shown in the movie of Al Gore, An Inconvenient Truth. But uh, note that it is an animation because, in reality, one would not have been able to uh, take uh, sh shots like that. Right. <laughs> now, how can, we're told that the, um, well, according to the data, it seems that the Earth is actually cooling a little bit right now. The new graphs show that it's cooling a little bit, but um, is the water, is, is there a, a discrepancy then between the temperature of the water in the Arctic and the actual overall global temperature? What's, is there a difference in the direction it's moving? Well, uh, as far as the oceans are concerned, it was uh, thought that uh, the oceans would also warm up because of global warming. There has been global warming. Most scientists believe that there has been global warming over the last 150 years or so. And, uh, well, that is, of course, normal because of the end of the so-called uh, Little Ice Age, which ended uh, around 1850. So there's nothing unusual about it. Uh, as far as uh, the oceans are concerned, uh, local oceans are concerned, we have to take into account uh, the various oscillations which take place in the oceans. We have the Pacific Decadal Oscillation and the North Atlantic Oscillation, and these oscillations, which have a, alternatively a warm mode and a cold mode, these oscillations are apparently now turning into their cold mode. So, uh, there might have been some warming of the waters uh, under the ice uh, in, uh, on the North Pole, but uh, it is expected that uh, this warming which has taken place uh, on the North Pole will now switch into the cold mode again. 
So the expectation is that we will have a cooling of the North Pole in the years to come. And it's in the in the clip that we showed earlier, these scientists said that the Antarctic is definitely cooling off. So again, people are going to say, um, well, then why are the ice sheets, uh, why are the blocks of ice falling right. off? Do you have any answer for that? Well, uh, these ice shells are always uh, breaking up. This is uh, just a, a very normal phenomenon. And it also, it, it only concerns a very small tip of the Antarctic uh, landmass. It is the tip uh, just opposite uh, the southern cone of Latin America. Uh, it is a, a small part of the Antarctic, and it has a special climate. The major part of the Antarctic, uh, say uh, uh, 98%, has a colder climate. And uh, according to the studies, uh, this, uh, this part of the Antarctic has been cooling a little bit over the last, uh, say, 30, 40 years. Now, the projections from the IPCC continue, you know, this warming trend. They show that it's going to continue going up. And the greenies, um, uh, as, as the many in the climate skeptic community call them, are trying to force caps on CO2 emissions. And, you know, and, and this carbon trading schemes, I'm not sure I understand what they're trying to do there, but we're having a financial crisis right now. If they succeed in these carbon caps and so forth, what effect will it have on growing economies as well as our own? Well, I think that will be uh, an additional impediment to, uh, to, uh, for economic recovery. Uh, we have a lot of problems at the very moment, as everybody knows. And uh, I think that um, uh, governments will be reshuffling their priorities in the years to come in the light of finding a solution to the credit crisis. And I think that uh, then um, the uh, whole CO2 idea might uh, fall down the wayside. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, the uh, climate alarmists and the climate skeptics disagree about many, many, many things. Right. But there is one thing about which they agree, and that is that uh, the CO2 schemes which have been proposed and which are working uh, in Europe, because we have a kind of mini Kyoto in Europe, that these CO2 schemes and these schemes which aim at reducing the emissions of CO2 will have no detectable effect on worldwide temperatures. But, but many of the countries in Europe are saying, hey, we can't afford to do this. So why, why aren't people just putting their foot down and saying, look, it doesn't make any difference. Why do we have to do this? Well, the point is that uh, uh, people have been indoctrinated by the uh, one-sided uh, announcement and statements of the IPCC, and this uh, particular fact that it will have no detectable effect on temperatures right. uh, has always been hidden by the IPCC and by the proponents of the man-made global warming hypothesis. You know, Hans, I mean, I don't know uh, how much you know about it, but I do know one thing that Al Gore's movie, An Inconvenient Truth, has done a lot of damage. You know, millions of people have watched that film and taken it to heart. And I really think that you and your group uh, should get together and do a film that sets the people straight about this great global warming swindle. How many mistakes, scientific errors, uh, were found in uh, An Inconvenient Truth? Well, uh, it is a very well-known uh, British climate skeptic, Lord uh, Moncton, who counted 35 errors. You can find it on the Internet. And uh, it's really, uh, because of that, it, it, it is no science fiction, but just pure fiction. It is one error per three minutes. And, and most people, if you talk to them about this, they will spew the facts from the movie or the book right. and say, that's the proof. You've got that. You have to accept that. There's no other way to think about this. Mm -hmm. Now, when we come back, and, and one of the things that he talks about in there is that the, the, um, the Pacific Islands are going to be drowned and people are going to have to find a new place to live. And when we come back, what about the sea levels rising and flooding, not just the uh, islands in the South Pacific, but also Florida and New York.